Welcome back to Conversations in Catapults, the number one after show for the number one D&D podcast. I'm your host, Nathan, and today I'm joined by a group of fucking winners. Hey. Say hello, hey. fucking winners. Fuck you, we're winners. What the fuck? <laughs> Hi, I am a winner, and my name is Ben, and I play on the hit show Trials and Trebuchets, Windsor Wallaby. It's been a while since I've done this. <laughs> winner, winner, chicken dinner. It's me, you- Carla, and I play the level seven tiefling roguelock, Integrity Adelberry from the hit show Trials and Trebuchets, where we hit. Yep, yep. we definitely hit. Hell yeah. You actually <laughs> didn't hit anyone. We love to win. We hate to lose. Woo! Hi, I'm Sarah, and I play Mira Marchand, the level seven half elf bard. But right now, I'm just Sarah, the winner. <laughs> we are the champions. We are the champions. Hi, guys. I'm Sam, and I am here to win more things, which I haven't won in a while. So I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> oh goodness! Winning. I got it. Yeah, <laughs> Thanks. Ben. You seemed the most surprised by being called a winner when you were the one who won y'all's fight just in six seconds. Like, do you not feel like a winner? Is that what's going on? <laughs> I feel like a cheater, if that's what you're asking. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah. My first question uh, is for you, Ben. Um, and it is just, are you going to be trying that trick out of the gate with every match? <laughs> if I happen to go first, which isn't often... <laughs> And no regulations are done to prevent such a plan, then I will continue to do so. Holy fuck. I tell, I'm telling you now, if I had rolled not a 23 and had gone perhaps in a different turn, things might have been different. <laughs> oh, I just really love the idea of this little gnome uh, just cheesing his way to victory in every round of this tournament. Listen, if there's like if there's a way to cheese something, I will do whatever it takes to go through and cheese whatever that thing is. Jones fangirls are going to rip you apart when you guys face them. Oh my right. gosh. Well, no, uh, because they will transfer over to me. They oh, will have yeah, but it won't overlord. change the fact that we're winners. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> we did it. Now, not to be a little bit of a downer on the whole winner thing, but Ben, like, how did it feel to effortlessly win after seeing how much Kurt busted his ass? Like, Kurt had his own Eye of the Tiger montage prior to y'all's fight, and you didn't need to lay a finger on him to win. In fact, right before the fight, Luke was like, hey, do you do anything to prepare? And right away, Ben, you were like, I do not. I fuck around for a few hours. <laughs> like, does that make Winsler feel any type of way when, like, comparing the two? Or does he just, like, not give a shit? I wouldn't say he doesn't give a shit, because he definitely cares about Kurt's well-being, but... Again, it is a competition, and clearly Winsler and Kurt have different ways of preparation. Winsler being fuck all, and Kurt being busts his ass and does twice the effort for half the result. So I'm pretty sure Winsler would feel a little bad about the whole thing because he knows how much Kurt worked for it. But then again, winning. Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely fair. All's fair in love and war, they say. Absolutely. We practically and, weeded out like catapults. the top people in our class. So like who's who's there to defeat us, you know? Mm-hmm. The top yeah, people. I mean Murandine's team has vanished, so they're not a threat anymore. <laughs> yeah, we don't Oh we don't know true. What's with them. Fuck all, who knows? <clears throat> uh now, Carla, I did actually want to talk to you about um that anticlimactic fight as well. Um ah. because before the fight, Professor Hass was like looking at you being like, hey, You've got this and very much like kind of wanted to let Integrity show her stuff. So is Integrity happy that the fight was quick and easy or is she disappointed that she wasn't able to compete and show off? Ooh. Um, well, I think I described it as Integrity just like ready to go in preparation for it. Like she was just like working out, exercising, doing like boxing and martial arts and be like, I'm going to defeat them um, because they're magical, but I'm strong and I'm integrity at Alberry, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so like I was so prepared to fight them. I think um, as maybe like a little bit of like disappointment and like not being able to show off her stuff, she's 
excited for the next one. Like, I feel like that's the idea that she has where it's like, if I don't show myself defeating these people, then I have another chance at showing that off because I know that I'm capable of that. Um, mm. that plus, makes a lot of sense. She may have sort of also thought where that it would be an easy win too because, you know, it's Angelica. And Ooh, it's- <laughs> Jesus. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, if you're not going to be confident, then how will you succeed, right? So it's true. To be fair, that is a fair read on them because there's Angelica, the link, the weak link. Uh, Then there is Kurt, who decided to exhaust himself before a fight, which is just never a great idea. Then there's Alina, who is actually very capable, Mm. uh, and Arior, who we know nothing about, but it's very <laughs> exciting that he was like a monk or something of that nature. Mm-hmm. I guess we'll never yeah. really know. I guess yeah. poor Arior. I know, like Arior could have like a have... sick multi class, and we would never <laughs> fucking know. It could be some like <laughs> crazy combo. I swear, <gasps> it seemed like Luke was building up for Arior to be like this hidden like badass because of like mm-hmm. the handshake at the very mm-hmm. beginning. Like, yeah, his hands are like iron. He's always very strong and silent at the back of the class. And then nothing. Didn't get a fucking shot at all. No, it was brutal. I mean, there's always next year. Yeah. (laughs) I don't know if this will be part of like, um, if Luke will keep the, uh, or if Nathan will keep this. Oh, wait, no. Yeah. If Luke will keep it in, in the episode about when he threw the cards away as soon as like, (laughs) like, threw (laughs) them across his room. (laughs) (laughs) It was very funny to listen to because you could hear the paper fluttering in the background as well. Yeah. I hope Luke it just boosts the audio on that so everybody gets to hear the, the frustration <laughs> in that moment. Sorry. Fuck that, I guess. <laughs> Every DM has been in the situation where they get ready for a big fight and just get totally stonewalled by the party, cutting the knot, so to speak. <laughs> uh, goodness hmm. gracious. Nah, I was trying to think of a good um, transition, but you know what I meant to do at the very beginning? And I was just so excited to ask about Ben's, you know, big win, his big catapult trick. The Ben Gambit. The Ben Gambit. Oh, I love that. Wonderful. I don't. (laughs) How about about the Wallaby Gambit? Ooh, that's good. That has a good ring to it. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, the Wallaby Gambit is perfect. We do need to grade some parents. Oh, Mm. boy. Because in 138, we were able to meet the Mazels. Yes. Yes. So, as... Uh, y'all know it's just a simple letter grade and just feel free to explain your grading however you wish Mm. i think that they are the nicest of the noble parents we know of so far um i don't know that nice is always like i don't know like how good and great they are outside of that context um but i will say that they are nice and so i will give them that um they are still rich nobles and so i feel like that automatically loses them a few points but i feel like uh serenap in particular really needs them right now i i'm assuming so i'm gonna give him a b plus mm. i totally agree with you for the same reasons where it's like you're cool and clearly you're being like a parent figure more than um serenap's parents could ever be um but you're also sort of out of touch. Like, ooh, we can just go on vacation and have and rent like seven cabins. Yeah. What was that? <laughs> Y'all know that like... one screenshot uh, from Parasite with like she's talking in the back of the car. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh my god, very accurate. Yeah. So it just feels a little bit out of touch, and so for the exact same reason as Sarah, I would give them a B plus too. Like both of yeah. them. Didn't they say they had like eight or nine week vacations or like eight or nine <laughs> separate vacations that were all like a week long? They or am I just yeah. making that up? What the yeah. Fuck? Like I can't even get one week of vacation or like two weeks. I can get a one week vacation and you person can have seven to eight weeks of vacation and be like not thankful about it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm angry. <laughs> no, that's fair. It's okay. It's understandable. I think I would also give them a B plus. For a lot of the same reasons, like very out of touch. Um, one of my big things when it comes to parents is will they let their child express themselves? And even though Sarah Nips gave the whole precursor of, hey, so this was kind of a magic thing that happened for the whole discussion of like the hair. Like the fact that uh, Philip's mom was like, oh, I remember doing my hair like that before. I'm just like, okay, yeah, that, gi- that gives you points above other things. 
So I, but I will go. I think I'm going to stick with like a, a B plus. I'm going to give them a B. Ooh, <laughs> wow. I know. Shocker. In a land of wow. B pluses, a B is a fucking F. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> According to the well, laws of aviation. Sure. They are nice people. I get that. Their heart is definitely in the right place. It's clear that they care for Serenep and Philip's well-being. However, they are rich nobles. And <laughs> we also don't really know much about them besides the fact that they are kind and their heart is sort of in the right place. We don't know what they do in their spare time or what they even do for work. They we don't know them an F, apparently. We <laughs> don't know how they act with other people. We know a few things that they do at work, which include... Uh, executions apparently it was just yeah, like something that was no. thrown in there <laughs> executions trade agreements things like that and it's like y'all breezed past the whole off with his head thing like, very yelm okay core. that's yeah not exactly fair because <laughs> we have talked about that kind of stuff in long ago episodes what it's like in the capital oh beats listen <laughs> they have the power to change society so I don't give like them an that. f uh i'm gonna give them a c Damn. Ooh, no bees uh, Mostly here. for a joke reason, which is uh, they didn't let Philip speak at all during the talk. Uh, <laughs> oh, you're Like, right. how dare they just talk over him like that, oh, you know? that's so yeah, funny. That... Now that you mention <laughs> it, I do realize that. Oof. Luke and I were talking Luke, about that. And he I was think like, he was just having too much fun with those. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, I had two people, and it's like, how will I speak for a third person? <laughs> Absolutely. My thought fair. process was that he was just that Philip was just like chowing down on some food or something and was just like oh. vibing out. Oh, that's didn't need nice. To talk. He has that golem appetite now. <laughs> oh. yeah, well, yeah, because he is turning into a golem. Stop, please. Yeah, his parents didn't even say a fucking thing about that. <laughs> yeah. Uh. They're letting Philip express himself with colored contacts. I think that's a point in their favor. <laughs> <Damn. laughs> He's getting into cosplay, oh. and they're very supportive. Oh, my God. School experiment. <laughs> School experiment gone wrong. Goodness gracious. Uh, Sam, speaking of the Maisels, Yo. does Serenepth want to live like them? Like, is that her ideal future of, oh, being able to be a noble, being with someone that you love, and not really having to have the same pressure that she currently does? I feel like, yeah, I feel like she definitely looks up to the maze of like what she kind of wants her life to be like because they aren't confined to a place. They like, like, they got, like we were talking about before, like they get to travel to all these different places and they try and bring Serenip along when they can kind of thing. And it just sort of that like kind of freedom, but also having like the security of your title and being able to marry the person that you love is like very much what she wants to strive towards, which unfortunately she's still working on. <laughs> yeah. D does that seem like something that is even possible to her right now? I think a big thing with Sarah Nept is that she's always planning. So there's probably a bunch of different scenarios going on. I think one of the big things when the whole discussion about, oh, hey, by the way, this is what my parents are like and I'm warning you now was... She's trying to keep on their good side so that she can try and make the change from within, if that makes sense. Like, try and see if she can, like, maybe try and loosen them up because now she has a goal in mind. And so she can kind of, like, pick at it to hopefully open a hole in the wall that she can kind of get through. Mm. I get that. That makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. Mm. And if not, she can disown them and run away. Oof. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, fair. You know, speaking of, like, Serenep's future i also want to talk about like her present uh especially after the interactions with angelica and everything like that mm. um just because angelica appears to be very envious of serena because serena has you know top marks in school you're magically like just more powerful than the people in your year and you also haven't been disowned by your parents Meanwhile, Angelica is no longer beholden to her parents, is rarely in any danger that she doesn't put herself in, and hasn't had to kill anyone, as far as we know. So my question is, does Serenep ever envy Angelica? Ooh. There's definitely a type of, like, before the whole discussion of, especially before the whole discussion of, like, hey, this is what's happening with my parents with Angelica, Um, there was this kind of aloofness that Angelica kind of had in her like presence that I think Sarah Nepth definitely was envious of. 
because just coming to Wildcliff even before Wildcliff, there was just a lot of stuff on her plate already that in her perspective, until Angelica started talking about her problems with her, she kind of viewed it as like this person is like just doing well for themselves like not not so much academically but kind of like like oh I can, I can gossip about things and be a normal like young adult who's just kind of living their best life kind of thing yeah I I think the dynamic has changed a little bit now because they've kind of grown closer as like friends that they that now she can kind of peek behind the curtain that Angelica kind of has around herself if that makes sense mm-hmm. but I definitely think that a lot of the stuff that Angelica kind of does on her own, like she's much more, um, oh, what's the word? Like it's not like it's it's like a impulsivity, right? And it's like if their situations were changed, it almost feels like they would be better fits for like the other person's uh, circumstances in a way. Yeah. No, thank you very much for that. I I really do like that answer a whole bunch. Yeah. No, it was. That was also, like, 140 was also just a very good episode that had no right to be the quality that it was. I mean, audio was kind of... Oh, the listeners will never know the audio hell that I had to endure. (laughs) Uh, But no, I also, like, on paper, if you had told me that, like, oh, there's a whole episode that is almost entirely, like, just one NPC and one player character interacting, I would have been like, that sounds like bad uh, podcast. That sounds like a bad show. And it also doesn't seem like it would be like, you know, I I don't know. Um, Mm. But I think that it has been so great to watch the Sarenath and Angelica relationship develop uh, and change and see it come to a head here in a way. Mm -hmm. Sarah. Hello. I ask you this because your memory is better than mine. Oh, God. I feel like I'm being about about to be tested. What's up? (laughs) Oh, did uh integrity ever actually like did we ever get a scene of uh mira reacting to learning that angelica had that pendant we don't uh um, mira does not know that angelica has the oh pendant. no one knows shoot That's only sarah right. saw it you know what you're right for some re- excuse me i got my things mixed up oh no worries does mira know that angelica has been gossiping or does she just suspect it uh she does know if i recall correctly that angelica has absolutely been fucking gossiping <laughs> oh about my the snake God. Arm. i can't remember what mira's yeah. reaction was but now i need to go back and listen oh I'm she was annoyed she well. snakes. a little outraged understandably so uh what? do you think that she would have a similar reaction to finding out about the pendant oh i think she would probably have to like kind of give angelica a piece of her mind not only in the sense of like don't do that but also in the sense of like i need to give you a genuine warning not to mess with this stuff because it will not turn out well for you i i I think it would be the underlying emotion would be concerned but i think it would still be expressed in a very frustrated way just because that's kind of the emotion angelica tends i think to inspire in people yeah angelica (laughs) is rather troublesome isn't she she is keep your nose out of other people's business no fucking kidding Uh, once once a gossiper, always a gossiper. Exactly. We need to dip um, Angelica into like the golem water. Oh no! And then, what? And then, what and then Angelica and Angelica and Ari can be like you know the gossip. Oh my Why god! Why does she have to be dipped in the golem water to be able to gossip with Ari? Explain no, yourself, please. Thing. Here's the thing. Carla is actually onto something here, which oh, is no. due to the time loop. Ari is actually uh, Angelica from the future. Whoa. Because they both have... Listen, <laughs> you remove the N, G, E, L, and K in the second A from Angelica, and you add an R in the middle, and it spells Ari. Oh, my God. Oh, sh- How was it's I been so right blind? It was in front of us the whole time. There's so many steps to this. <laughs> uh, now... Sarah, this is also a um, question that I had for you about the end of 140, which oh, yes. was <laughs> such a great cliffhanger. Um, but how does Mira feel about not being invited to that meeting with her parents and with Crow? I think um, I think there's a little bit of worry, um, not necessarily just in the sense of like, oh my God, my parents are totally going to be like speaking for me and what I want here. But I think 
also largely in the sense of like I can't or at least before I was brought in couldn't be there to like try to diffuse the situation because I feel like uh, on some level the Marchand parents being very very upset with the school is probably a fairly reasonable reaction to receiving a letter from your uh, child's teacher being like so your daughter doesn't have an arm now but at the same time I don't think Mira wants that kind of like frustrated overreaction or like worst case scenario like threats to like pull Mira out of school because like for, for Mira she needs to be there you know what I mean and she doesn't want mm -hmm. more eyes and more attention on everything that's happened and so it's a very awkward situation that Mira has now found herself placed in I think absolutely and you know there's also the factor of oh if my parents yell at Crow I'm still the one if I stay at school who has to deal with Crow on a daily basis or like a regular yeah. basis oh absolutely oh I hate that it's very <laughs> I, I'm just scared to find out what happens in the next few episodes. That's <laughs> you all. and me both. <laughs> I really think that they should like let Crow pay them a lot for reparations. A little bit of an out of court settlement for Mira's arm, and it'll be fine. God. <laughs> and this I is can... how the Marchands became become part of the no the oh nobility. My God. <laughs> <laughs> On that, uh, climb no. the ladder to noble status in like one sitting. <laughs> How do you think it costs Crow an arm there? and a leg to become a noble? Oh, oh. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> One more step to go. Stay tuned. Where's the leg part? <laughs> Stay Working tuned. Oh, well, I do have uh, one last thing, and this is something that we actually haven't done in a minute. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember this game that we used to play called Tinfoilery. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. You can tell it's been a while since we've played Tinfoilery, mostly because a lot of the theories that I've gotten are back from June when y'all were dealing with a certain pebble demon. So this is going back to the beginning of the arc. Dang, we're going back in time. Damn, exactly. Time? I wanted to do it like a quick little throwback. Time to, loop. You know. Yeah, we might get thrown back if we decide oh. to let the time loop up. <laughs> Thank you. All right, now that actually makes more sense than anything that I was going to say. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's time loop. That's what the reason why I did that. Anywho, uh, the rules of tinfoilery, we all know them, we all love them. I have three anonymous uh, fan theories here. Two of them are from real fans of the show. One of them is from a fake fan. Me. You. How do you actually <laughs> fake? <laughs> <laughs> I hate this show. I just listen to it because it's my job. Uh, uh, hurt. Oh. Same. <laughs> no. Oh, goodness. <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and paste the theories in the chat after I say them. That way y'all be able to follow along easily or like mm -hmm. read over them and look over the different typing styles, which have been adjusted from their original state in order Ooh. to throw you off. <laughs> they went Punctuation has been removed. Um, oh, capitals damn. have been added or removed depending oh, on what the original what the message was. Interesting. Interesting. We are going to be tricked. This is psychological yeah, no. warfare. What are these new I'm rules? I'm tired of y'all always winning tinfoilery. I want one now for me. Okay. So. Oh, God. I'll lose on purpose. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, no problem. So, <laughs> the first one is the Pebble Demon actually hitched a ride from Isithil to Wildcliff after Swim's first field trip there. It has a bird skull for a head, and it's tied to the traditional four elements, like rock and fire, in a way that's similar to some of the creatures in Isithil. I know there weren't any, de any demons or anything like that from Isithil, but maybe it changed after coming in contact with weird Wildcliff magic. IDK LOL. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, I like the next one. Ooh. And Ooh. <laughs> yeah, Luke is also in the chat. Um, reacting. Live reacting. <laughs> oh, all right. Our live studio audience, Luke. Oh my God. Just imagine if Luke just sat in on this and we just cut out his audio. He just, uh, here's no, we cut off his mic. <laughs> Completely. Yes. Okay. <laughs> my batshit insane theory is that the fire demon <laughs> the team just beat was summoned to their version of Wildcliff by Miss Fenwick so she could try to get an edge up on the other mentors. This would also expressly explain Alina and Angelica's involvement when the pebble plot was first introduced. I like that. <laughs> Anything for Fenwick to be involved in any capacity. Oh, I love, Fenwick. love evil Fenwick. I mean, evil Fenwick was super Fenwick. sad when they lost. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm Fenwick sure any mentor would be super sad. Especially Artis is not. The, especially... Artist has no emotions right now. He's sitting in my that's, pocket. That's because Artis there. is our mentor and we fucking won. <laughs> He's also a rock. <laughs> All right. He cannot convey these feelings. <laughs> this final theory has 
a uh, screenshot to go along with it as supporting evidence. Oh? From what? the Discord. Yeah, something that Luke has said has actually made this person think that uh, this theory is the case. <laughs> Here it is. So this person has is, is on the Discord often. Perhaps. Uh, basically, the Pebble Demon is on Lee having come back for revenge. My reasoning? Mm -hmm. Heterochromia. And we all know that An Lee oh, is a skeleton now. God. It wants to burn things, and fire is the opposite of ice, which Faramel used to kill her, and thus she has a vendetta against it. Pebbles are round like orbs, which is what An Lee was originally in the hatch for. Now, the reason why the, hetero the heterochromia matters is because both of them had it, and Luke also decided to draw attention to it on the episode that, uh, in the Discord, when that episode Ooh. was released. Ooh. Ooh. So you're saying so, that the last, the third one is oceanic. Although it could just be <laughs> Luke being Luke saying, hey, look, here's another case of heterochromia. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a good point. Can you give us, uh, as is tradition, the names of the other two theorists? Um, oh, you know what? I think that <laughs> I'm, I'm an anti-traditionalist, you know? <gasps> well, one of them's probably- I'll it's, give them one of- It's Anon and Emus. I'll, I'll give you one. Okay. All right. One of these theories is from me. Well, oh, yeah. well, that <laughs> Thank you. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Tell us which one is not yours. Mm, mm, yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How are we going to reverse <laughs> psychology this? I'm going to say number two is your theory, Nathan. Ooh. The one about Fenwick. Mm. For some okay. reason, my the way you talked about- I think like, that if oh, you had a theory about Enli and you were really into her, you would have learned to pronounce her name. So I'm not, I don't think the third one is you. Or I mispronounced in order to throw you off. No. I feel like How the third one is something that someone would have definitely come up with. That feels like Rowan to me. I don't know. That is Rowan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. All right. So now the rest of y'all have an easier job because I just decided to give that away instead of fucking, God damn it. I'm so bad at this game. <laughs> No, I'm just a master of interrogation. No, I don't know if Nathan is lying or not. Oh, I'm gonna say the if... I'm gonna say the first one. Ooh. I'm gonna say the first one is fake. I feel like someone s somewhere in the Discord talks or um, uh, explains stuff this way, where it's like it's tied to these things, blah blah blah. So I feel like Nathan's is the second one as well. I also want to say that I think the second one. Is just because they really talked about like uh, anything with Ms anything with Fenwick in it is like my thing, and I don't think I've seen anything recently in the Discord that has talked about Fenwick at all in Especially general. So I think this was you trying to bring in your fan favorite character into another crazy conspiracy theory to try and get her back in the show more often. <laughs> All right, well, because of my uh, miraculous blunder, uh, none of y'all voted for the third theory, which honestly seems like one that could be true. Um, however, only Ben comes away with a point this time. Damn. Uh, damn. See, babe, I you. told you I'd get it wrong on purpose. <laughs> oh, my. Fuck off. Oh, damn it. <laughs> for some reason, you were like, oh, yeah, I changed well, the spelling of you. things on purpose. I'm like, oh, yeah, like. IDK, LOL. Okay, here's my back shit thing. I'm like, okay, only two of these have that kind of stuff in it. Mm -hmm. So who's the other one that came up with a... So, yes, theory. so big thanks to Blossoming Desire uh, from the Discord who sent that in Ooh. back in June. And Ooh. big thanks to uh, Superfan Rowan uh, for sending in Damn. theirs a while back as well. Uh, great theories all around. And if you would like to submit a theory for Tinfoilery, join our Discord. Uh, I am always on there, and you can just shoot them over to me in a DM real fucking quick. Oh, You're a real fucking starfire. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, hmm. We have a bit of time. <gasps> Would y'all be interested in doing another bit? Another sure. bit? Well, I yeah. like bits. There was someone who was introduced in truly in this episode who we got to know a little bit more, and as is tradition, we should ship them. So Kenneth the Horse Wrangler. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Uh oh! The new Altine with a hunched back, black oh hair, looks like a gargoyle. I guess. Yep. <laughs> hmm. Oh jeez. I like to think that even though he drives him crazy, I think him and Crow, like like uh, the boss and like the boss's assistant, kind of like workplace romance thing, is a very good trope that a lot of stories like to go with. Like, so I'm I'm going to go with that. 
Ooh, that power imbalance, though. Mm. Mm. You're going to get canceled but for that all one. the oh, drama that could You want to hear it. about power imbalances? Okay, here's my proposal. <laughs> oh, no. Kenneth Horse Wrangler x Juanita. Okay, so Kenneth Horse Wrangler <laughs> is a beleaguered assistant. What he needs, more of all, is not to have that fucking shit job anymore. So what he needs is someone with a lot of money. Juanita is the ultimate sugar mama. Kenneth Horse Wrangler knows a lot about apples. And what's the common expression? You're the apple of my eye? Get it? Juanita. It's perfect. Oh, my uh, He gets to move to the big city. He gets to live, like, up in the comfort of a bank. And not only that, because he's not an assistant anymore, he doesn't have to worry about Juanita's penchant for vaporizing assistants. Mm. Kenneth X. Juanita. Get on the, the bandwagon. I... Uh... <laughs> well, I've consigned... I concede to this one. <laughs> Damn. Oh, you mm. can't think of a good one for Kenneth Horse Wrangler? See, the I was key thinking... Here, you gotta pick an NPC and and then make up the reason why after picking the NPC. Exactly. Okay. I was thinking Ocean. Um or uh just because like so she has like a sort of like a dying business from what I under from what I remember. Um and maybe there is some mismanagement happening there, apart from that there is a big debt owed towards her um but i feel like kenneth horse wrangler knows like the ins and outs of business mm. and mm -hmm. you know so i think that he might be able to help um ocean out with um pumping up the business maybe apart from having a airbnb <laughs> um they could have like carriages which is great for him because he's a horse wrangler um so uh, I think that can add it to the business, adds pizzazz to um, the Airbnb, because that's how you make a really good one. Like, have lots of activities so that you can make up a really good schedule. I see. And, and he's also that. good at, like, selling lemons and a bunch of other produce. So, Very yeah. true. Uh, Carla, your whole mind meld between you and your character has begun to happen to me because I started to write down your name and I started to write down integrity instead of Carla. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. That matters so much. I'm so glad that I'm able to take over her. <laughs> Who's talking right now, by the way? Uh, I just wanted to check. <laughs> I would like to not answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, guys. It's integrity. Oh, no. It's in to I can't. I don't know how to I don't know how to mix those names together, actually. In Before Carla. Go for there you go. <laughs> in Carla. In Carla. Cartegrity. In Tarla. That's integrity, but she goes room. <laughs> Good chow. I don't like this bit. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sorry. Ben, do you have nothing? I don't know. I'm I'm stumped. <laughs> I'm actually stumped. Just I don't like, know. I guess a name I guess since hatch. no one's done this, it seems pretty obvious. Kenneth V. Altine or whatever. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, they're both assistants. They both hate their job. Why uh, not find something that they enjoy, which is each other? They can both shit talk. They can assess each, each other. other. <laughs> yeah, what's it? How, it feels like uh, Kenneth has like a lot of like disregard for Crow, or like doesn't like him very much. While Altine, it almost felt like he was worshiping the uh, Underbow's feet. So I feel like those two like dynamics could actually yeah, be they'll bond good. over their mutual hate yeah. for Crow. Oh, I true. wonder how Andrew. that would work. Where it's like Altine will be like, "Here, let me serve you, and let me." Let me pull your chair for you, and then and then Kenneth will be like, "Well, I want to pull your chair, but then I can't pull your chair if I'm already sitting it's down." It's just an endless cycle. I don't oh, know. Think a relationship will work. Oh, the most goodness. stressful part of any relationship. Compromise. I know it sucks. Compromise. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> all righty. Well, in that case, here is uh, the review for all of us here at home. Uh, we have Sam for Kenneth X Crow. Uh, that boss underling relationship is ve always very spicy and always a big hit. Then Sarah, Juanita ex Kenneth, giving Kenneth what he really needs, not just love, a little bit of money too, a great sugar mama, and uh, safety from being evaporated by Juanita. Then we have Carla with Ocean and Kenneth, uh, you know, making an Airbnb. Kenneth can actually really enhance the business using his powerful business skills he knows a lot about lemons he knows a lot about scheduling he can really kick up ocean's breeze a whole lot and then ben with the kenneth xl team getting to bond over maybe their mutual hatred of crow and maybe they might bicker over their differences and assistance ship so go ahead and dm me with uh your pairings whenever you're ready <laughs>
<laughs> what is that expression that you're making, Nathan? You look mildly horrified. Mildly horrified. I don't know if I spelt their name right. Suspense. You did. Excellent okay. work, as always. Uh, in a unanimous victory, <laughs> we have Kenneth X. Juanita. Uh, <laughs> because, of course, we all kind of see ourselves as a put-upon assistant who just needs a little bit of money in order That's to live true. out our dreams. Exactly. <laughs> who doesn't yeah, no, want I definitely... someone to provide them all their money? Yeah, when Sarah was describing that, I was also like, damn, I could go for a Juanita, you know? Like, yeah, little... couldn't yeah. we all? <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, thank you all so much for joining me uh, once again here on Conversations and Catapults. I have had a wonderful time, and I hope that you all have as well. Um, and, li- dear listener, thank you for joining us. Stick around after the break while we go and slide into the DMs. Bye! 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 Bye. Bye. Welcome back to Slide Into the DMs. I'm your host, Nathan, and I'm joined by Luke, who Hello. just got a badass pendant with absolutely no drawbacks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my cool talisman on a leather necklace. I found it in a room where a voice spoke visions into my head. <laughs> I do love that as a mo- minor detail, though. Like the Angelica having bloodshot eyes and then them assuming, oh, she must have just stayed up all night, too. But or it's she really was just crying. It's because she was trying not to blink. Damn. Because uh, whenever she was closing her eyes, she'd see visions. Ooh, I love that. Thank you for getting that on the episode here. Now we've yeah, already no started problem. With- the behind the scenes peak. Go watch My Hero Academia. I steal everything from it. <laughs> oh my god. I can't believe Angelica is stained. <laughs> Good shit. It, that's what the pendant did all along. Fuck. Totally. Totally, totally. <laughs> oh, well, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and just uh, start us off. You know, I w- was going to do chronological order. Yeah. But we're already talking about. Um, you know, what Angelica would have done mm-hmm. during the tournament. Mm-hmm. Would you mind giving us a little peek behind the screen as to what uh, Akia had up their sleeves? I was or very prepared for this. Or is that still a trade this. secret? No, it's absolutely not a trade secret. I was re- prepared for this. I grabbed my... I actually had to fish the Kurt or Lane stat block out from underneath my bed from where I threw it when we were recording. <laughs> Please tell me you're going to keep the sound of you throwing it because it absolutely. literally comes through in the recording and oh, I love it. Does it? Oh, I'm super yes, going to keep can that hear in. the paper. It rules. <laughs> oh, that was a very funny moment to me because it's it's just like it's literally been so long that I don't know. Maybe it was me being like, oh, Ben doesn't do the same tricks twice. And then immediately Ben rolls a 20 or Winsley gets a 23 on initiative and goes, yeah, bitch, I'm going to do the same thing twice. <laughs> it's such a power move. It's so good. Uh, and at the same time, like I felt for you very much as a like, number one, I was feeling it because I love combat. I was so excited mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. see combat. And then <laughs> I got just the worst case yeah. of like, it's, um, yeah delayed gratification let's say <laughs> that's a way to say it yeah thank you <laughs> we're really and, edging and the combat <laughs> oh my god you can't say edging if i'm avoiding the phrase blue ball, blue ball. <laughs> um but yeah i can absolutely share what was there anything specific you want to know or just give me like did you want me to give you an overview of like who these npcs what their stat blocks were kind of like so the question is like how do you assign stats to pre-existing characters? Like, were these mm. already in place from the very beginning? Or were you like, all right, it's tournament time. I mm-hmm. know I have a vague idea of what each of these people do. Mm-hmm. It's time for me to go ahead and, like, put numbers to mm-hmm. uh, informed attributes. Yeah. So uh, I have a little, I wouldn't call it a document. It's just a page in, like, an old spiral notebook, which spiral notebook derogatory i hate spiral notebooks which is why i say like an old one and like that's why it's not actually a document or anything official i'm just like this existed in a notebook from like university from years ago that i just wrote down while i was in class this um, is back before i knew better to get fucking <laughs> real notebooks and not a spiral yeah oh shit uh but that i actually did after episode 13 after eyes on the prize um because one of the big pieces of feedback i got from ben specifically was how much it just felt like pvp and the reason that might have felt like that is because i took some npc stat blocks and assigned quite a few 
um, PC class uh, features to them, right? Mm -hmm. Like uh, Karina, who is a divination wizard, uh, just had portent, right? And so oh, it was yeah. using portent, which I still stand by. Uh, and there was other such things. Ira had a lot of ranger abilities because she is a ranger. And Murundine, the fucking nerd, uh, was just like, I smite, smite me, smite, smite you, and was hitting people, breaking ribs, right? That is what Murundine sounds like yes, uh, all the canonically, time. Canonically, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. um, so I stand by those things, but there's other elements that their hit points and relative damage output, like the mathematics of it makes it feel a lot more PVP than it ought to. Um, because yeah, the mathematics of, N of NPCs or monsters is shifted so that they aren't supposed to be around as long. They don't have as much sustainability as a um, player character. And so they need to also have a matching damage output, right? Uh, so that you can do as much damage in a short duration as t of possible, as opposed to a lot of damage over a lot of time, like a player character can, right? Because player mm, characters can take a shit ton of damage and can also do a lot of damage. Even Winsler, who's like our, our fragile child of a fucking player or of a, uh, of a character, can take a lot of damage, even at this level, right? Or even y a while ago, like 25 hit points, even when they were like lower level or something which is still a lot for a player character especially with the amount of damage winsler can do as a wizard you, you get Absolutely. my point um so all that to say and then also spell choice there was a sleep spell and that's the day that i learned not to use sleep against players uh because oh, yeah. it's not fun um no using like anything that uh stuns, takes people out paralyzes or puts to sleep is like yeah. very great if you're a player uh, yes. but if you're a dm it's like you should only break that out if you need someone to have a monologue. Yeah, uh, because it's like essentially me just directly saying, you're not allowed to play right now, um, yep. which no, it's not fun. Um, no. Save that for, here's a tip that I read the other day. If there's an NPC traveling with the players, use it on them so that you still get to use those spells and have fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so based on those like that feedback from Ben and the other players from the first, the, from the spring dueling session, I went and revised the way I approached making NPCs uh, for dueling against, specifically, specifically the student ones, because I knew that we were going to eventually, in two years, get to the uh, Autumn's End dueling uh, session. And so what I did was take, that, take a, each character, each first-year NPC, essentially, and assign them one, like, keystone feature from one of the classes that i really liked so for karina i just kept that portent and i made it uh, and i was like okay when i build karina out again the next time i have to i will just key in on making that a interesting feature to use in the fight uh kurt was actually originally i think i gave him like arcana uh, or the arcana cleric feature which i don't mm. recall right now but i just thought was very fitting because there wasn't a um strictly speaking uh like official source book artificer at the time uh so i that was like the close the next best thing in my opinion i forget what the arcana cleric feature is but well the arcana Cl cleric has the feature of uh not only like turning undead but also abjuring other mm -hmm. um like types of creatures such as yeah. like fey fiend etc mm -hmm. um that's the main one that i'm thinking of outside yeah. of also getting access to wizard and yeah like uh, cleric cantrips yeah it, it might have just been that kind of intent with it but uh since then uh he now has the kurt now has the but sorry 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 i'm getting ahead of myself but that's the general sense of how it did it i i based their archetype around um a certain class or a certain feature from one of the actual player character classes instead of building them as a minorly player character it was like a monster built around a single class feature um and that's a way that i actually really enjoyed was then now building those characters out or building the NPC stat blocks, I took that single feature and then essentially chose a monster from one of the source books that I thought was really close that got me like 90% of the way there and then just customize the stuff. Because that's the way that I build custom monsters, or, or not even custom, but um, that's the way I do uh, uh, fight prep and encounter prep is I don't view anything in the monster manual. I think they tell you this. I don't view anything in the monster manual or any of the official source books as like set in stone monsters. I always write it as archetype, right? Uh, mm. As like, oh, this character is of the, uh, is me a Magman or like uh, something like uh, something like that, right? 
Um, so what I did preparing these four for their first duel was I went back, consulted that list, changed the stuff that I didn't like, and switched out some new stuff. For example, Kurt went from being the Arcana Cleric to now being uh, an Armorist or an Armorer, right? I was hoping that was the case. Fuck I yeah. I love the Armorer. Uh, Alina stayed as a Transmuter. Angelica, uh, the wonderful Sorcerer, uh, stayed as a Sorcerer. And then... A wild magic sorcerer specifically oh, which I was quite excited for. I was about to ask because like there are a lot of different uh, mm-hmm. sorcerer things that you mm-hmm, can mm-hmm, have mm-hmm, there. Mm-hmm. I just liked that one because I think the initial thing that I wrote down was that she was to be a storm sorcerer but I also felt like that was far too close to Serenep for mm-hmm. my comfort and as although I do like the parallel of her being a storm sorcerer and Sarah Serenep being like this this lightning like uh, lightning dragon sorcerer right that's fun parallels on top of the artery existing parallels of Angelica wanting to be more like Serenepth, right? Uh, and being likely compared to Serenepth by her peers and parents, right? We had uh, a great talk about that, by the way. In the oh, I'm section. glad. I'm, excited I'm very excited. Uh, but anyways, Wild Magic Sorcerer, um, which also has a very interesting lore anecdote, or not lore anecdote, but a very interesting uh, implications for how you would think about Karina's a wizard and Angelica's a sorcerer, right? And that's just that, interesting to me. It makes sense with their personalities. Karina mm-hmm. being someone who is going to work hard to be mm-hmm. the very best, much mm-hmm. like a wizard needs to mm-hmm. in order to gain power. And uh, Angelica being a sorcerer with mm-hmm. innate uh, magic. Yes. That, I also uh, enjoy Angelica is the firstborn twin entitled to all of the hereditary compliments of that. The same way she is just given magic. She is just given status uh, presumably if her parents were to pass, everything would go on to her as the firstborn child versus mm-hmm. her sister who uh, must work for anything to any scrap of what her sister was just given. Right. And also this goes along with Angelica's um, lack of mastery because mm-hmm. she has very little control over what happens when she casts. Yes. A spell. That's why it's a wild magic. Yes. Uh, also my favorite fact, this is kind of, I, I won't get super specific like this, but I, Angelica does have negative two intelligence and I fucking adore that so much. <laughs> uh, it shows. Um, and then for Arior, who was always a monk, I don't think I had ever decided on what kind of monk he was. And then I was browsing through Tasha's and I was like, or was it Tasha's? Whatever the one that has the way of the astral soul. Um, yes, that is. Uh, yes. Tasha's. So I was like, oh, this is cool as hell. And I could super flavor it to be some cool dwarven stuff, right? With like the way his uh, arms were to would appear, um, which I was super excited for. I'm so mad we didn't get to see Ariel. I bust know out. you. I, I think it's probably gonna stay in the episode, uh, but you can hear me scrambling for a response. Where I, I'm like, in my brain, I was like, D- I really hope that the 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 um deflect missile i was like is it just within five feet or do you have to be targeted please 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 right and then and then ben rolled way too high of damage anyways and and like also deflect missile only works if it's targeting you so i was like no and i was like all right you can just have this one dog um yeah i was really excited for arior because we've never seen him do anything arior has been condemned to the life of ganal and lucia yeah yep unfortunately uh but yeah he was gonna be a uh astral soul monk that i was very excited to like just do a lot of punches against people with and punch people in their souls and stuff like that um Uh, yeah have those spectral arms that can extend out like a further 10 feet or whatever yep 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 hell yeah uh and then kurt was just um armor yeah armor with like he had an interesting passive ability though that i i don't know how robust it was i think i could have made it a bigger demerit but just because he never sleeps i had a sleep deprived uh passive ability on him that was like he has disadvantage on uh saves against being charmed and sleep spells and stuff like that right oh nice i would have just given him a level of exhaustion being like done with it but i like giving him an actual like condition yeah yeah it, it that that's the stuff i like is just making stuff way stupidly specific <laughs> understandable <laughs> and it's also really interesting to me because one of the things that um you know i do a lot in our campaign mm-hmm. um is a lot of my npcs who are like humanoid uh almost all of them mm-hmm. that you meet uh do have like player class like yeah. i just went into D beyond and rolled up a brand new player mm-hmm. character mm-hmm. they just like gave them like a whole class feature thing 
So it is very interesting to hear that, and I may need to rethink my own approach to, like, making those NPCs. Yeah, I think that's really fun for, like, a friendly NPC, right? Yeah. But because of the feedback and the way that I wanted the tournament fights to go, I wanted them to be a bit snappier, so I really lowered the hit points and upped the damage output of all of the NPCs just so I that we gotcha. could get something snappy. Um, because presumably we're going to have a couple of these, so I wanted to really burn through them um and it's really fun that the first one was just ended it was yeah. so good i i yeah that stuff you can never predict and i really love it it's so good god like on the one hand fuck ben for taking away a fight from <laughs> us but also god i love ben for doing i love that, that the episode immediately prior the ep- episode 138 you can hear me in episode 138 just realize we're not getting to the fight today. The moment that I say, oh, what do you do for the day? We can just do that as like a quick little side, or we could do a whole scene. And in that moment, I realize like, oh, Luke, what did you have? What have you done, idiot? Cool. Yeah. And then we didn't fight anyone that episode. And we we're like, it's happening next episode. We're going. And then we started the next recording session. Like, it's happening. We're going to fight. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Sarah laughed because I just time skipped us right to the moment before, which was a suggestion that like that was Sarah's suggestion, right? It was like time skip us is on the field and like us getting hit, someone getting hit with a spell, right? That would be um, badass. That would be awesome. Um, but and then we still didn't get a fight, right? <laughs> oh, heavens. Alrighty. Uh however, like in that 138 mm-hmm. where we did yes. have a bunch of like scenes with folks, uh one that I wanted to talk to you about was um the mazels in particular yeah. Yeah. because they are some of the first uh like non-hostile or like non-sinister adult yes. nobles that we've seen yes like so what are like your guiding principles while playing the mazels mm. guiding principles while playing the mazels was uh in the in the scene i realized one of the, my guiding principles was figuring out on my feet what the fuck philip's parents were named because i forgot to give them names in my notes <laughs> so you can hear me go uh I forget his name even. It was like I have no George. Idea. George. His father's name's George. Thank God. Hey, um, real talk in the grade of the parents for the players. Yeah. Uh, I just said the Mazels the ma- because I <laughs> realized that right beforehand I didn't know what their names were and I didn't yep. want to go back and check. Yep. Only George is named. Um. Anyways, but the actual guiding principles were I wanted them to be these very out of touch, kind, but very out of touch Um. in like the not the way that we've seen the other nobles, which are that we've been informed Serenef's parents are like, or like hinted at the way that the Lindmans are like, where they're just like out of touch and that they're above society and have no need for like the basic, uh, like every, like every letter from Serenef's parents has been like written by a, like a, like a, just a maniac of a parent. Right. Mm. Uh, which is that form of out of touch of just like, we're in control of society and you are my daughter. You will do as, we ask you, you're not an actual human, blah, 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 right? Um, the Maisels, on the other hand, are just out of touch in that they're like, we're very w- wealthy and powerful, and everyone goes on many vacations, and this is a regular part of life, right? Yeah, they're not above society. They're off to the side, enjoying yeah. the parts that, like, other folks just don't get to enjoy. Yes, exactly. Trying to do as little as they need to to maintain their position, uh, which is chill. And just raising their kid to kind of not be into that and want out, I guess uh you know i just love the mazels as like that example of and this is something that has gone around for a while but they seem yeah. very much like nice but not necessarily kind yeah um where it's very much like oh sarah i'm so sorry about those issues with your parents i hope it all resolves itself well yeah like yeah, meanwhile yeah. like i don't know what power the mazels have or like what influence yeah. they may have the mazels could the absolutely Sindermans exert some sort of influence over because they're also just uh courtiers right so uh, and and advisors to the royal family and the ongoing processes uh like economic advisors uh, i think that can be intuited based on reference to taxing um and also executions yes (laughs) but they could absolutely have some sort of sway over the current uh business at the capital um between the royal family and the cindermans and whoever else uh but opted not to because they were like oh we don't want to deal with that right that sounds like uh, work so are you exactly <laughs> we have all this no! money to spend what do you mean <laughs> oh no don't be ridiculous <laughs> oh 
Oh. Yeah. Oh, uh, I enjoyed hearing all the theorizing about the nature of the letter Serenapth received and what is ongoing. That was very interesting for me here from the player section of last episode. Oh, is it accurate? Because it seemed like it would, like, the letter didn't seem like it was, you know, anything to speculate on. It was just like, yeah. oh, this is a continuing talk from, you know, Scandal when Serenap talked about arranged marriages yeah. and all that jazz. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, I would say most of it was accurate. Yes. It was just interesting to hear. It's always just nice to hear speculation that's on point, you know? Fuck yeah. Um, in that case, you're going to love tinfoilery. Uh, this episode. <laughs> um but, God, you know, one thing, though, they just didn't let Philip speak at all. Which God. Is just, oh I know, I'm God. messing with you. <laughs> no, I'm so... I was editing that episode, and I was like, did I really not say fucking anything as Philip in this scene? Why is he just quiet? <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I feel it is a little bit relatable, like, when you're... Uh, either your partner or your potential partner mm -hmm. is uh, meeting with like your parents. You want to give them the space to have those talks um, <laughs> just because like, Oh, I don't want to seem like I'm guiding the conversation at all. Mm -hmm. I want them to hit it off without me being involved. Totally. Totally. So that's yeah, what that, was doing that, that's, my... that's what was happening. <laughs> yeah. Philip was just being very kind. Yes. Well, Philip is, I think a pretty nice person. He's a bit chirpy sometimes in like two scenes that he's existed in, but uh, you know, He's he's pretty. That's all he needs. To <laughs> he be. is. He looks like Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh God. Are, are we gonna see Philip in a uh, tournament fight? Uh, Serenep, when walking back from the uh, infirmary, overheard a tournament or oversaw, like saw from the distance and heard that the other first years were involved in some sort of duel as well. So, oh shit, uh, that's who right. Knows? There might be something going on there because if you recall. Uh, the posted plan or the, 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 the plan as it were, as it stood was since Murundine and though that team were not back from Isithil, likely due That's to right. a smush effects, uh, that the others would just be given a free pass to round two. Um, that's not what happened. That is not what happened. It's a, a different decision was made, which I am exhilarated for. I'm excited to find out what it was. Yes. Yes. Um, I was, I was, I was hoping that Sam slash Serenup wouldn't go and peek at that. I had confidence that Sam wouldn't do that because Sam's very much like a, there is things to be done. The, the business must be attended to, right? Like the background can happen in the background. I have the foreground to focus on, which is enjoyable sometimes to be able to like throw hints out at there and have a player who won't immediately chase down stuff. You're not, or you're hoping narratively that they won't go chase down yet. Right. Fuck. Yeah. Um, yeah, and you know they can always catch it next week, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Was the time loop like was the was the never ending autumn's end always mm -hmm. the plan, or yeah. is that a pot part of the potentiality? Uh, the uh, never ending autumn's. So, <laughs> how to tell without showing my hand? The smush is. <laughs> If you cannot answer this without showing your hand, no problem. I can ask other questions. No, no, no. I can think of... I think I can manage this. I think I can navigate this. these waters. You say Autumn's that, and you're going to give something huge. I know. That I will then have to edit out, but I'll <laughs> live with. Autumn's is... end repeats. This week, it will repeat. And every week, a new batch, a new year uh, shows up, which is fun to think about of like... Ooh, does that mean next year's first years or, or next year's like group of students is going to show up next week? That's very fun to think about. Um, if you tell the players they are not going to end the time loop at all, because yeah, I, this I way they can see, um, oh, what's his name? Cormit. Cormit. Yeah. Cormit yeah. at Wild Cliff. Oh, I love Cormit. That boy was so good. Cormit oh. was just a, a solid dude. Yeah. Named after an Italian greyhound. That sounds about right for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh anyways though um and so since the smush is happening and since time keeps repeating and the smushing keeps happening presumably right like a new it's like almost like you have a ball of, like you know the <laughs> like a rubber band ball <laughs> and then you put more rubber bands on it right and so it just gets to be a bigger rubber band ball right it never stops being a rubber band ball that makes no sense but it also makes a lot of sense if you know if you think about it 
it's all smushing. And so the smush is continually happening. So the time loop's happening because things are smushing together in this particular place and time, right? I see. <laughs> Nathan shook their head vigorously when they said that. <laughs> Here's a fun fact. I didn't understand the difference between <laughs> potentialities and alternate universes when you tried to explain it the first time. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just... No. This no. is an interesting thing. I use, specifically used the words time loop and, and like went with that oh, because I kind of realized that no one fucking understood what I was doing. So I was like, all right, we're going to bail on that slightly and jump to something a bit more sensical that everyone can wrap their hands heads around that I won't have to sit around explaining to my friends no this is what potentiality is it's like a cookie with chocolate chips no you see you take all of the cookie dough and you roll it together it's still a cookie but it's just in a ball now <laughs> it's like when you no. get the bread and you make the bread ball i sincerely believe that i understood it while we were recording and then it's something happened after, after the we fact. stopped recording <laughs> yeah i get you oh. um but yeah we we i'm intentionally like Mm, departing from my original plans best laid plans are bad when people don't get them speaking of original plans yes was it always a plan for angelica to be such a main character no god no absolutely not um the moment that i decided i want to do, so years ago we i made characters uh named Marundine. Actually I made a character named Mugrundine, but then in the moment didn't read my paper fully and said Marundine, which is a better name. I made a character Marundine, a character Veldin Deep Lake, a character Ira Alaro, and Karina didn't exist, right? Because Sam wasn't in the show, so I didn't have a need for that many students. And then uh I really wanted to do more stuff with Veldin and Ira because I still have plans for the two of those schmucks. Um Ira we touched on slightly with running away from her group because of something in Isithil calling to her uh and also her mother exists right which is an interesting thing to examine uh and interesting to examine i think through the lens of mira's relationship with alma alaro mm. uh and all the interactions that we've seen together with them but we've talked about that uh, a couple times on the podcast already so no need to uh, belabor it um but then karina came to exist and so did angelica those two characters were of my own creation sam didn't create them but i created those two as a complement to Serenap and Philip, right? And then they kind of didn't do that much. Karina was on Marundine's team, which indicated that I do... Marundine's team is just a team I have interest in uh, using as... Uh, not protagonists, but, like, you can see the same horrible... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it, it's just interesting to show this is, like, like the, the swim and their team is, like, experiencing this thing and has, like, protagonist syndrome and, like, horrible things follow them. And, like, two of the other teams, that doesn't really happen to. But then one of these other teams also kind of, like, is an echo, as it were, of Swim, right? Where they're mm. going to the same places, getting tied up in the same horrible events, dealing with this conflict and such, but in a less grand way. Like, I think all the problems that team has faced has been very minor they're not like oh like low scale yeah they're low scale like they've gotten very hurt in isathil and stuff like that and like gotten to arguments between one another and like gone into the sewers with swim back in faint or in food for thought but it's never been like we need to uh, keep the orbs away from this deadly snake who speaks into our brains and can give us power of uh warlocks and and is existed for time immemorial maybe right like it's never been I that lost high both my arms <laughs> yeah 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 it was more like oh i broke my leg right that uh, still sucks to that be fair that sucks but um, you don't lose it which is not yeah. nearly yeah and so that indicates i had a bit of an idea of what to i wanted to do with karina and then angelica popped into the picture i think that the moment i realized i really wanted to do something with both lindman sisters was when sam kept actually bringing up study buddy stuff with angelica like and just always wanting that to be like oh i'm doing that in the side where like we don't have to show that but i just want to, you to know luke like i'm fostering that relationship off to the side and references it a couple times in the podcast and then during the mailbag last year for uh, 2020, it was something Sarah said that just jogged my brain into wanting to do a lot more with Angelica 
in a forward manner. And my plan for that was at Autumn's End. So now we've arrived here. I can shove the Lindmans in people's faces and Angelica in people's faces because Serenup fostered this relationship. And Angelica being this kind of person who just like tries to uh, bulldoze people is a very fun character to play as like the tattoo scene is like the pinnacle of that i think of where she's like spoken to mira once maybe twice i think once before and goes like oh how do you get a girlfriend i would love to be rescued from a book and it's just like mira's anecdotal to that conversation it was just angelica wanting to talk about shit um (laughs) god Uh, it's one of those things i love angelica as a character i would hate to be around her yes very I, i i enjoy that greatly and so uh like her being like oh mira you already have a tattoo let's get that tattoo or we're all getting tattoos obviously mira you're getting a tattoo obviously right just because you're here with me you need to right um and being like a very big influence sarah touched on that like during faint of heart when she played angelica or alina for a second was like oh she's really bossy and i kind of took that to heart um but anyways angelica having this role right now was just the result of the characters being or the players just in being interested in that her right in those two sisters and one of them's not here so i can just focus on angelica right mm-hmm. um Fun one. yeah who's nosy who already has been to the sunken hatch who has never gotten told the full story because they don't want to tell her understandably and, and so it's just fun for that character as for me as that character to like kick the beehive a little bit you know absolutely Things were a bit too stable. Yeah, no, that's what I was thinking. You know, their mentor is in a pebble. So is Canon Nathan. Uh, They have a new headmaster. Uh, Potentiality and or time shit is going on. (laughs) Yeah, no, that's all super stable. They made a limo wand stand where they're competing against a cider stand that they then did arson to. And they also are like going to be facing a class action lawsuit from everyone who had to visit the uh, infirmary. (laughs) Yep, yep, yep. Oh, I don't know I'm what so to tell you about, about this. That. Yeah, it, that like, sounds like a very regular school life to me. <laughs> University in Canada must be <laughs> wild. Yeah. <laughs> Angelica, Sarah not taking an interest in Angelica as a like, rela- like just like, oh, we're, we're, we have forged this kind of relationship between this NPC and my character also allowed me, if I, as Angelica, wanted to kick the nest of the hatch a little bit of that main intrigue it pulls Serenapth a bit closer in, right? It gets another hook into Serenapth in a way that I've desperately been trying to do in, in so many ways. Sam is very impervious to my techniques of, like, in rapturing people and mesmerizing people, hooking them in. Sam is very much level two level-headed to succumb to my fo- tomfoolery. How do you mean? What when have they, like, fought against your hypnosis or whatever you're trying to call it? <laughs> um, it... Well, I guess they've been, Sam has been, Sam slash Serenaf has been like pulled in a little bit ever since Faint of Heart. But before there, there, there was that disconnect, right? And then as soon as we reached Faint of Heart and it was like taking a front stage with the main intrigue and Nesca and the orbs and the progenitor and this kind of like triangle of like who hates who and why does these people hate each other? What actually happened, right? Um, and then in the Nesca fight, uh, Serenaf being directly spoken to by the progenitor. If you go back and listen to that, uh, the progenitor's music plays and I thank Sam greatly for knowing that it was the progenitor but still fully going in on Saren up to not knowing what and being very curious as to who was speaking to her mm, God, mm-hmm. that's good stuff I agree yeah um, it led to episode 140 which was awesome in my opinion it I love that shit yeah no uh, I already said this in the player section um, but uh, if you had told me in abstract what mm-hmm. episode 140 was uh, I would have like written you an angry DM or yes. something like that. Been like, you have four people at the table, Luke. Mm-hmm. You got to involve all of them. Come on. And it turned out great. Like it yeah. was honestly such a tour de force between you and Sam. Thank you very much. Sam did an amazing job in my opinion. It's going to get edited um, because Sam was just like at a couple moments genuinely locked up because I was trying to scare them. Uh, which I think I was doing successfully. And so it'll get edited down, but it was very, even just without that, it was like exceptional. I really enjoyed Sam's 
like performance and like thoughtfulness in all of that right uh, especially for a character who was originally conceived to be the draco malfoy of the right group. it's uh, yeah it now the exact opposite like emotional just the core most, like maternal character yep. that we have seen on the show mm-hmm. including moms all you the know? moms <laughs> <laughs> maybe not yeah. ma wallaby but you maybe know, just yeah. about everyone else <sighs> oh, yeah goodness. i really liked that yeah i'm excited to see where it goes yeah um it let me take so i was on vacation a couple weeks ago a couple like the 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 week before we recorded that if i'm not mistaken and i had gone into the woods this is just for the context of the listener who might not know this. I think everyone who like is involved with the production of the show knows this very well. Um, I went into the woods to do some camping and I brought a 11 horror novels with me and I read three of them. And then I came back and immediately wanted to do scary stuff. And in the moment that I realized this is Saren up the loan in this place, a powerful entity is trying to contact her and Serenept and Sam combined are both scared. And then I was like, ooh, my brain is pulling me towards, like, all of the horror novels that I had just read were, like, stretching their legs in my head and, like, being like, do this, do that, do this spooky shit. And it just, like, that thing that happens when you're just sitting in the dark where you think every something's watching you every single noise takes on something else i'm very afraid of the dark just personally so like walking around in the house and like hearing creaks and uh knocks and bumps i'm like Ugh. and so like pulling into that for the sunken hatch was very fun uh especially this different version of the sunken hatch from what we saw at the very start of the show yeah i liked that mm-hmm. um, very unfamiliar mm-hmm. which was very good oh, yeah uh, hopefully we get to see more of it uh sometime soon yes um hope angelica is okay i hope that girl's okay i hope getting your blood on a hmm god forsaken talisman is fine i assume there has to be like more ritual like chanting going on you know to make it count <laughs> yeah you gotta have a chain you gotta have a magic circle you can't just have the blood yeah. because you can get that anywhere yeah blood sacrificial dagger who <laughs> what else that's nothing was it a sack she used a regular dagger that's not it, sacrificial yeah it's just, you know, it happens to be the one that was in the the the, the Nesco reverence child room. You know, who's to say? One that uh, all of Swim have already cut their own fingers with, if I'm not mistaken. Or maybe oh. Integrity. I think, it, was it everyone or was it just Integrity that cut her hand and like opened all the urns? I forget actually at this For point in time. I thought it was Integrity, but it might have been all it, of them. It might have been all of them because I remember that was one of Sarah's strong pieces of evidence for how Nesca found Mira was smelling the blood yes yeah it must have been all of them Mm -hmm. yeah good shit good shit i'm glad that uh sarah has finally joined her group mates and uh being blood buddies with blood buddies i'm so excited for next episode is that weird for me to say in cnc (laughs) no um, we've not recorded the quickest way for us to get to next episode ending this one oh my Uh, gosh Luke, would you mind doing the outro this time around? I would love to do the outro this time around. Uh, if you join, the, if you, the listener, enjoyed this episode, uh, leaving a rating and review on Apple Podcasts would be would mean the world. It helps other people find the show and uh, just boosts our signal to as many people as possible. Uh, and failing that, if you just want to tell a friend or tell strangers, hey, this is a good show and you should listen to it, that's also appreciated. Uh, if you enjoy teasers and art and uh, seeing retweets or seeing other people's art, following us on social media at Trials and Trebs on Instagram and Twitter is an invaluable resource for you. Uh, As I said previously, you can see all those things that I mentioned. And if you make art, tag us on one of those social medias so that we can see it, so that we can retweet it, so that we can in some way enjoy it and share it around. That would be a great of you uh, because we all love some art. After that, uh, there's a Discord link in the episode description join there talk to other people who listen to the show not just about show things there's much more discussion about just like uh outdoorsness animals uh just general things that people do in their lives and they're all luke is talking about the specific channel that he made to talk about his own interests (laughs) there are also other things to talk about the special interest channel which is (laughs) greyhounds working out going outside and science (laughs) um but that's one day the canon lab will be a channel (laughs) and i'll be able to have my own interest there and i'll never join it i'll never (laughs) join the conversation (laughs) 
Uh, but that link is in the description, folks. Uh, and finally, uh, the Patreon. The Patreon lets us make this show, patreon.com slash trials and trebs. If you want to support the show, if you enjoy what we do and you think they that you'd like to just give us money for that, you can find the link down in the description or, again, patreon.com slash trials and trebs. There's a couple of different tiers. Uh, you can get bloopers, you can just get thank yous, or you can get my horrible notes. Uh, and Or not horrible, they're actually pretty good in my opinion. They're really good. Uh, but like all of the actual stat blocks that have ever made it into the show um that are in my notes are in there right so like up until i think at this point we've just reached the till death do us party in the notes uh so it's a bit delayed behind um because you know i don't write a thousand pages of notes so i gotta like gotta gotta sift them out gotta give them only a couple yeah you gotta Uh, gotta keep them coming back for more exactly exactly yeah you gotta ration it out (laughs) every notes section ends in a cliffhanger also (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um but yeah if you want to support us there it, it it's really appreciated uh it helps us make the podcast it helps us make this show it helps us do other stuff reach our goals there's a goal of improv classes there's another goal that's yet to be posted that we've all had many conversations about privately that it, it, it's pretty close in in our relative terms but it should be going up soon uh and then there's also the musical episode which is uh, thousands of dollars away and a uh, pipe dream but still help us reach it god yep the musical episode is uh, literally just such a pie in the sky thing that it's, I'm like, that won't yeah. happen, right? No, it's And I'm very scared not. for the day that it does happen I'm, because that's going to be so much fucking work. Yes, I'm going. Well, at that point, uh, we'll just pay people. That's true. <laughs> that's true. That, that is why it is at that uh, price point. Well, actually, and also, uh, I don't know if you already did you already say to uh rate and review us on yeah iTunes i opened it with that one apple podcast folks yeah, or apple podcast not itunes we're not yeah. gonna be on itunes don't look for us on itunes <laughs> well the musical episode will be the whole musical album oh you're gonna put the, the <laughs> all right perfect make sure to update the patreon with that pledge uh, absolutely well. perfect. um this was fun. It was fun. Luke, thank you all. All, all of me, Luke, was uh, it was a pleasure. Damn to be it. Here. Don't riff, because then I can't redo <laughs> the take. <laughs> well, thanks, Luke, for being a real bother and a real pain in my butt. And uh, thank no all problem. you listeners for joining me. And never mm-hmm. forget, the best outro is to not have one at all. <laughs>